So this morning, I was sitting down at my desk, getting ready to log into my computer and start working my day job. And suddenly I got a call on the phone. It was my wife, Allison. She had just left the house about, I don't know, 10 minutes ago. So the fact that she was calling me was a little bit alarming. As you can probably tell right now by the weather, uh, we got another snowstorm uh, last night and this morning. Didn't get a ton of snow. It was only about three or four inches, but it was really, really thick and really, really heavy snow. And the roads were really slushy and icy. Earlier that morning, I'd actually gone off to the post office to ship off another batch of Goldshaw Farm hatching eggs available down below. And as I came back and, and saw Allison, I remarked to her that the weather had just been horrible and I told her to drive very carefully. You know, she was actually going to work today at her emergency room hospital job. She was driving on a back road about five miles away or so from here and there was a sharp curve and she thought she was going slow enough but it didn't seem like she was going slow enough and she skidded and slid and her car was now off the road and stuck in a bank of snow and she couldn't get out. So for me, this was a call to action. And so I quickly figured out where she was and told her I'd be there in a couple minutes. I ran out to the barn and grabbed the heaviest chain I had that I usually use for the tractor. And I hopped down the pickup truck and I carefully drove down the road to go find her. I was kind of nervous. I have uh, never been the handiest guy in the world. And I've often thought of myself as, as quite incompetent. And, and, and when I say incompetent, it comes down to lots of these traditional skills that you'd call like manly man, masculine skills. Now you're a mile, a mountain, mountain, mountain. Skills like building things or fixing things or working with equipment or machinery. To be quite honest, those were just not the skills that I was ever raised with. You know, when I was young, my father was a teacher. When he was a little bit older, he actually worked in human resources. And even though I had uncles and cousins who were electricians and, and worked in trades, I wasn't really personally raised in a trade type household. And so being confronted with a problem like your wife driving off the road and you needing to pull her out, I don't know, there would have been a time in my life when I would have been super intimidated by that. In fact, I had a situation like that that happened to me gosh it was maybe about four years ago now back when i was still living in washington dc but we had the farm and i had actually come up here to vermont for the weekend and i had this rented pickup truck and it also so happened to be in april and this pickup truck had summer tires and i was driving along here in peachum vermont and i accidentally slid off the road and drove into an embankment and that set off an adventure that took darn near six hours before I could actually get my truck pulled out of there. It actually required the help of my neighbor, Nate, who, by the way, that was actually the first time I had ever met him, as well as two different tow trucks to finally pull this pickup truck out. And I remember when that experience happened, I felt so incompetent. I felt so incompetent because I was so unskilled at driving in the snow in that pickup truck and I'd driven off the road. I felt so incompetent because I lacked the wherewithal to get myself out. And it felt so embarrassing and humiliating to me because I had to ask for so much help to finally get myself out of that situation. But I also will say that those feelings, those were the old me. That was me four years ago. That was me before I moved up here to Vermont. That was me before I really started to build some of the things that I have and had some of the adventures that I've had. And looking back and reflecting on that moment, I feel like maybe a certain small measure of personal growth, not a lot, and I know I've got so much more to do and to grow and learn, but I feel better than I was. And believe me, that time when I slid off the road wasn't the only time that I've ever been out stuck in the middle of nowhere. I've had times when friends have had to lift me out with tractors, I've had times when I've friends have had to tow me out with their pickup trucks. And so in those experiences and in those failures, I feel like I've developed a little bit of a skill set and a little bit of an understanding. So again, this morning as I was driving out there in my Ford F-150 that still had its winter tires and has four wheel drive. And eventually as I drove about five minutes down the road, I saw Allison there stuck in the embankment. I turned my truck around, parked right in front of hers. And she definitely seemed quite relieved to see me. But I will admit I was quite nervous about the experience too because 
Even though I thought I had a good game plan for how to pull her car out, I wasn't quite sure if it was gonna work or not. But as I was walking to her car and thinking about that feeling in the back of my mind, I sort of stopped myself and checked myself because I realized, look, I'm gonna do my best right here to get her out of this ditch. Maybe I can do it, maybe I can't. And I know if I fail, We'll try and figure something else out some other way. I've got friends I could call, I got AAA I could call. There's lots of options still to solve this problem. And it was really that thought right there that helped me kind of buck up and get just a little bit of confidence. And so I hooked the chain to the bumper of her car. I hooked the other end of the chain to my truck, put the truck into low gear, and just tried to pull her right out. Just kidding! Come on! And the car moved out of that muddy snow embankment as easily as possible. And probably about five minutes later, Allison was heading down the road on her way to work, and I was heading back to the house to start my day of work. And the problem was solved. Hey, Toby Dog. What you been doing? Uh-oh, buddy. You got more burdock on you again. You guys see that? You poor puppy dog. All right, I guess it's time to get my evening chores going and start getting everybody ready and locked up. Let's see what we've got for chicken eggs. As you can see, most of the birds are starting to get into their roosting positions. Good to see everybody here. All right, so we got four right here. Looks like we got one in here. I'm always sort of afraid that they're gonna poop on me when they hang out up there and I'm down here getting the eggs. Nice job, ladies. That's eight eggs on the day. Good work. Let's check in with Mr. Pablo Barncat. How are you doing there, buddy boy? Did you have a good day today? Hello, weird chickens. Let's see what the silkies have produced for the day. Wow. They actually produced six different eggs. I forgot to collect from the silkies yesterday. Um, but it hasn't been that cold, so they're not frozen or anything. But six eggs is a good haul from the Silkies. And for those of you guys wondering, here's the difference in size between a regular chicken egg and a Silky egg. You can see they're much, much smaller. Because they're smaller chickens, that's actually the reason I keep them separate from the rest of my flock. Look at that. All right, let's keep searching for eggs. Let's see what we got. Toby, what happened there, buddy? What happened there, Toby dog? How'd you get locked inside, pal? Huh? You are one nutty dog, you know that? I don't know exactly how this happened, but... I mean, I guess I know how this happened. It, sort of, uh, the post that I usually use to stick in there must not have stuck in as well. And somehow Toby got trapped inside the duck house. How's it going there, Senor Pablo? Enjoying the porch? Bet you are. <laughs> Did you miss Toby? <laughs> I bet you didn't. Alrighty. What are you doing in there, girl? Got three eggs right by the door. See if there's anything in the nesting box. Although Puddles looked like she was about to lay, but she hadn't laid yet. Nope. One actually duck keeping note I should tell you guys about. So ever since I cleaned out the duck house the other day, I've started to not lock the animals up at night with water. Even with my special screened in area for the water, they'd still track it out all over the place over here. I, I experimented a lot with this one and have checked in with a number of people to say, hey, is this humane or not? And the general consensus is, no, it's fine. And so, yeah, I've started to lock up both my ducks and geese without water overnight. Now, I know this one might be controversial, but you know, like I've always said, I'm interested in being transparent. So I wanted to let you guys know. And, and so far, what's been great about it is their eggs come out so much cleaner. The duck house gets so much less filthy. And so I'm leaning towards making this just the way I keep ducks and recommending not putting water in. For other duck keepers out there, I'm curious to see what you think down in the comments, so let me know. We now come to the most perilous time of the evening chores. Collecting the eggs from the mama gooses. All right, girls, out you go. Come on. Now, let me just check. Make sure there's none over here first. Oh, there's one. All right, ladies, I need you to get out. Out you go, girl. Mamoose goose. You too. That's two eggs. Ow! <laughs> wow, she just went for my finger right there. She is not happy with me at all. 
You know, a lot of you are probably wondering why I'm not letting my geese just hatch the eggs. And the reason is the snow. You know, it's not uncommon for us to get snows like this all the way into mid-May. And for the baby birds, that could just be fatal. And so I've found just to have much better luck by hatching them internally inside the incubator and then brooding them. But that said, I'm gonna contradict myself now and show you one experiment I have going on. Hey, broody mama. So I'm actually letting this mama goose sit on a clutch of eggs. She was the same goose that hatched out eggs last year. And so I've got a little bit more hope for her mothering skills. And so I'm gonna let her sit on this clutch and see how she does. I know that there's the risk of hatching out some baby birds that might not make it. And, and really when it comes down to it, that is the cruelty of nature. I'm gonna give this one a shot because I have a good feeling about her as a mother. Okay, no new eggs, that's good. You keep sitting on them. Both the mama goose and the other geese seem to keep dropping eggs in the nest. And so I have been pulling out the fresh ones, but she is sitting on a couple. So we're going to see how it goes. Now let's see if anybody dropped any eggs over here. Nope. Just my fugazi. That's a fugazi. How do you know it's a fugazi? You looked at it for two seconds. And as I've talked about it before, this is a ceramic egg. It helps me convince the geese to know which spot to lay in. That's a pretty good egg haul for the day. I'm very pleased with that. I'll just hook that right there for safekeeping. All right, now let's start locking up the birds. Let's start with my homeboy Pemmy here. Good night, buddy. Good night, silkies. Their feet turned into mush today. Oh, that'll be cool that they can pick through tomorrow. Come on, General Washington, let's go. All your gals are already inside, except for Carmen, who likes to sit on the door. Down you go, Carmen. Sometimes it takes a little bit more than just saying all ducks go to bed when you're in the springtime. It's actually gotten particularly harder ever since I got the new drakes. Because I got to get the drakes with the program. Once the drakes are with the program, they, everybody knows what to do. Hey there, Bruce the Goose. How's it going, buddy? <laughs> all ducks go to bed! All ducks go to bed! All ducks, go to bed! That means you too, Ron Swanson. You know, it's funny, the rest of the Parks and Recreation crew doesn't want to go to bed. So it'll take a minute to get Ron inside. Hey, old Jemima, how's it going, girl? Good to see you. <laughs> you went the hardest way possible. Get out of the house, you geese. Go, go, go. How'd you go? Go, come on. All ducks, go to bed. All ducks, go to bed. All right, now I got to coax Ron Swanson to get in. Come on, Ron. All ducks go to bed. All ducks go to bed. And the geese too, if they want to. So lately the Parks and Recreation crew hasn't been going inside with the ducks. They've preferred to stay out with the other geese, which is okay. But for Ron's protection, I need to make sure she goes inside. Oh, your door got closed again. Good job. Well, this is one of those nights where Pablo is very thankful for his cat house. Isn't that right, buddy? I don't know about you, Toby. You kind of can take the house or leave it. I know, I'm gonna feed you in a second. Hang on, guys. Hang on, I got a special treat. Yeah, it's Toby's favorite. Pablo, you kind of can eat anything, so you don't really care. <laughs> Toby likes to stand guard while Pablo eats. Making sure none of the geese try to get in on their business. I realize I probably forgot to tell you the most important part about my little adventure this morning. And that was specifically that Allison is okay. I think it was funny, like that was immediately my first concern is when I heard she drove off the road, I was worried for her. But just so it's very clear, and I don't get a million questions in the comments, no, she's doing good. Um, no injuries, no, nothing. I mean, there's no car damage. It was just. She simply skidded off the road, so it's not the end of the world. But when you do have those moments where a loved one is in sort of a perilous situation, it does 
tie your stomach up in knots, right? But when you get done and, and finished with those types of situations, it does make you very, very thankful for what you got. Whether it be your wife or your dog or your barn cats or your geese or your chickens or your ducks or your whole darn farm. Or even all of those family and loved ones that aren't on your farm. It sure does make you thankful.